D-laps claiming victory over the Viking One. Clear audio, no buzz. Welcome to D-Lab's quest to get the Viking One operational. In this video, I'm going to troubleshoot the abrupt loss of modulation. I never would have got to this point if I didn't have all the great comments and suggestions from you guys here on YouTube. Believe me, with the amount of work I have around here, it was almost to a point I just wanted to push this thing out of the side so I could move on with other projects. So thanks for keeping me grounded, guys. Let's get this thing fixed. All right, so in the last video, I had resolved the buzz issue finally. That turned out to be a bad solder connection. Then the modulation quit. So here, I'll go back to that clip. But now, so watch what happened. I've lost and modulation. Point, I thought the modulation transformer could be bad. I see the meter smoking a little failed. bit, but so it was obviously something much more simple. And I think I found it. So I'm in here investigating the sudden loss of modulation. As I stated in the previous video, I still had modulation current on the meter of the Viking 1, which all appeared normal, but suddenly my modulation was gone. I still had full power output, but some of you pointed out that you saw flashing on this little push to talk circuit board in this area. So I thought, how could I possibly have arcing on this board when it's only running at 12 volts DC? So I thought, well, maybe it's a reflection because I reviewed the video. Let me cut to that real quick. You can see the flashing on this pad right here and this pad in this configuration is not even used so I thought well it can't be arcing but something could be reflecting on it okay so I thought well maybe it's the push to talk lamp reflecting but it was cutting on and off not at the same timing as the plate lamp but over here is the interstage transformer and underneath of that is the terminal board where the modulation transformer is connected so I thought you know I probably should check the resistance of the modulation transformer and you can easily check that on the back of the CW phone switch so let's do that right now I'm across the modulation transformer leads that are on the CW phone switch. So when you're in CW, it's bypassed, okay? So you should see a low resistance. And then when you're in phone, that short opens and allows the modulation transformer to be in line, okay? Now look at that reading. There's some fluctuation there. Normally, I would see around 75 to 80 ohms on the secondary of the modulation transformer. You can see there's a lot of fluctuation. So I'm going to poke around on this terminal board that was under that interstage transformer because look, it's, it's just all over the map. So I suspect what we had was a bad connection. It was probably arcing and we saw the reflection on that circuit board. So you can see my numbers are all over the map. Ah. Now I'm pushing and holding the wire. Look, we're right at 73 ohms. So there's something up here that's loose. Look, I'm changing the numbers. I'm moving these wires. So I'm going to drop out the interstage transformer. We're going to inspect that terminal board. Right, so I'm dropping out that interstage transformer so I can gain access to that terminal board. Be careful not to drop any of that hardware into the radio. Alright, there she is. Let's give it an inspection. Alright, well there's the connection area that had sensitivity. And see there we got a loose lead with a little arc mark on it. So maybe this guy was part of the problem, but I also suspect a cold connection on one of these wires. 
So, yep, there we go. Another thing that was missed during the initial inspection. Well, I believe there was two things going on. Because we have a open, not a short. So that little piece of wire may have been arcing in there. But I still believe there's a bad connection on this terminal board. Hard for me to be in here and show you this. Let's see. Yep, right there. See it? When I moved that wire, it jumped. So we still have a cold connection on this terminal board. So I'm going to resolder that, make sure it's stable. We'll retest. All right, I think we're good to go. Here is 200 ohm scale. You can see the modulation transformer resistance. Tugging around on these wires, rocking around the terminal board. It appears to be rock stable. So, I believe the mystery of the modulation dropout is solved. Get it back together and test it. I've got the Viking on. And what I want to do is watch this area for any signs of arcing. So I'm going to kill the lights in the shop. I've got my receiver set up over here. Volume's way down. We are in phone position. My audio's all the way down. I'm just going to key it and make sure I don't see any arky sparkies. You guys don't see any activity on that circuit board, right? So I got full output. My mod current is about 45 milliamps. Bring up some audio. One, two. Okay, I'm hearing it coming out of the radio. That's a good sign. Now let's bring up the audio on my receiver. Oh yeah. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two, three, four. And there she is, guys. Got modulation back. All kinds of forward swing. She's crystal clear. And the best thing is, there's no buzz. We got all the problems solved with the Viking. So it is the morning here in Battle Creek. I get up and I have to work on some projects. I need to get this Viking out of the way because I have many more in line, but I wanted to follow up. So obviously the modulation problem is solved, but it was caused by another bad connection. So I do plan on totally inspecting every connection in this radio, make sure nothing is missed, because I sure would hate to ship it off and have the owner say, man, it worked good in your video, but it doesn't work good here. So that'll be the next step. Then I'm gonna get the covers on it. We're actually gonna put it on the air and see what people think of the Viking One's audio. I'm hearing Terry real well. Terry, you sound great on it, sounds really good. And we've all, uh, even me in my short AM career, I've had the, the same thing on a Viking too, kind of, sort of. But uh, you know you're doing good. Gary, I hear you keying up, but I just don't hear any audio. How ironic is that? <laughs> Man, guys, I really appreciate it. I busted my butt on this Viking one. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Marcia was right there with me. She got to feel the pain of what I went through trying to get this thing fixed. And then some. It was like like a quest. I mean, I, I woke up in the morning and I'd wake Marsha up and say, I know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fool I am. But anyway, guys, man, I, I really appreciate you chiming in. This thing is just looks like it's working great. And, and I monitored it on a receiver here and it was just super crystal clear. Um, how about the uh, bass response, you know, overall audio, is it good? Well, to me, I, I'm using a uh, R, R3A Telstar receiver, which has pretty good audio going into a, uh, a really nice set of uh, speakers. And uh, I think your audio is very good. I should turn on the, if you want me to, I'll turn on the NC1A3D. Because that's that's my standard for AM audio reception, but it's pure, it's 
it, I don't want, you know, when you say communications quality, everybody thinks high pitch, it's not high pitch, not to me anyhow, it's just normal audio, sounds like you Good. in person. Good. And let's, let, let Craig say what he thinks, and if you want, I'll turn on the other receiver. Yeah, man, that'd be great. Yeah, put it on a tuber rig. Yeah, Craig, what do you think, man? N6TLU. Excellent, man. Yeah, I, I would appreciate a recording of it. As a matter of fact, guys, this whole QSO is going on YouTube tonight uh, because the owner of this radio, I don't know if you guys saw the whole history, this thing arrived to me shattered and smashed. Whoever packed it just put it in one, one layer of some fine bubble wrap and pretty much shipped it in a grocery bag, okay? And it got destroyed. So... You know, I fixed it. I thought I had fixed it. And then I started having all these other issues. Gary got in there and he helped me out with a lot of things. I really appreciate that, man. And now she's working. I almost gave up. I actually emailed the owner and I was like, I'll give you all your money back. I'm done with this project, okay? Because I've got ungodly hours in. And you know what it turned out to be? Two bad solder connections. One on the 6AQ5 ground and one on the modulation transformer. And now, man, listen to it. So very this good. is this is so great because uh, I did not expect that I'd ever fix the spiking one. <laughs> oh the torture I went through and the torture that I put Marsha through. So <laughs> very cool guys. And I guess I'll have to get with Gary maybe tomorrow on the uh, DX60 net so he can hear it. He told me that the um, Viking 1 is his favorite Johnson transmitter. And you know what? When I started this process, I would have to disagree with him because the Viking 2, to me, was the holy grail. But now, watching this thing perform and hearing the audio reports... I think I've changed my mind. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, Craig, go ahead, man. N6TLU.